Hey, what's up guys? Back with another video today. Uh, I've been doing a lot of work, my eight to five job, so I haven't really had a lot of time to finish some of the programming videos that I'm working on. I've got some assembly language videos that are in the works, um, some more basic player missile graphics, and um, some good stuff coming up. But in the meantime, I thought I'd shoot a quick video today. Um, I got something in the mail I thought you guys might be interested in. Um, it's called the Monster Joystick. The Monster Joystick. And what this is, is it's a really big retro style joystick with arcade style um, controls, really nice buttons, auto centering um, joystick. And I thought I would uh, order one of these. I ordered it a couple weeks ago. And um, it's actually from a company called Monster Joysticks out of the United Kingdom. Uh, 54 dollars pounds, which I don't remember what it worked out to be US dollars. I think at the end of the day with shipping, I paid 70 some dollars for this. Um, the only caveat is it comes as a kit. You've got to put this together yourself. So I did that today. I filmed it. I wanted to show you how I did it. So if you decide to get one for yourself, you can kind of watch the video and see how I put it together. It's not too difficult. It's a little challenging if you're not uh, mechanically adept, you know, using small screws and washers and little plugs. Um, something that um, the girls in my life probably couldn't do, but if you're any what of a handy person, you can put it together yourself. Um, they come in different colors. I got what's called the ice blue um, controls with a black case. They've got clear cases, they've got um, different colors for the controls. And this particular model here, they call it the Deluxe Mini Monster Retro Gaming Joystick Kit. That's a mouthful. Deluxe Mini Monster Retro Gaming Joystick Kit. I'll pull the website up here so you can take a look at some of the options that they have. Um, but, so I got it together today. It's compatible with, it comes with a six foot cable, by the way. It plugs into the back of the joystick and then there's a, I think it's a six foot cable or more that goes to Ataris, Commodore 64s, Amigas. You know, all the retro computers with the nine pin, you know, Atari or Commodore, if you want to call it plug. Um, but it's a well-built joystick. It's, um, it's got two buttons, button one and button two. Um, I've got mine set up for a left-hand orientation. You can actually put the joystick to the right and one of the buttons to the left if you're right-handed, if you like having the joystick on the right. Um, there's also a switch in the back, which I believe allow, allows you to, for those games that um, want you to jump with the joystick. I might be saying that wrong, don't quote me. We'll get into the instructions later, but there's a switch on the back. I think it has something to do with the way the joystick works. Um, but in any event, so let's take a look at how I put it together and then I'm going to play some games with it and see how it, how it works, how well it works, and then we'll give a final review on it. So let's jump right into the, uh, the assembly of it. It's going to be cool. Don't go anywhere. The panels are some sort of a plastic acrylic and it looks like they're cut with some sort of a laser cutter based on some of the markings I can see on the um, on both sides where the actual cutouts are. It's kind of blackened, almost like burnt, but not 100% sure. So the kit comes with all the individual pieces you need, the joystick controller itself, the buttons, the ball for the joystick, the screws, the nuts, the wiring, and the cable interface board. Um, it all looks a pretty good, decent quality. Um, overall, the instructions are pretty clear in color, which is kind of nice. Um, the joystick mechanism itself is pretty solid. Um, I think it's made by a company that makes um, joystick parts for actual arcade machines. It's a self-centering joystick. It's very clicky, uh, but very responsive. You can see the individual um, switches for each one of the axes. Buttons, you know, very, very nice, very good quality. Um, so the first thing you have to do before you put the joystick together is you've got to remove all the paper backing. It's stuck on there with some kind of an adhesive. I guess it's, it's put there to protect 
the acrylic plastic from being scratched during the, the cutting or moving or manufacturing process. So it takes a couple minutes to remove all that. Next on the list is to build the bottom plate of the joystick and we're all, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to attach the small interface board for the joystick cable. It uses four plastic um, screws um, with plastic nuts and you've got to put the screws in with one set of nuts um, and then you slide the board on those screws and you use the secondary set of nuts to tighten the board down to the bottom plate. The next part of the process is to attach the back side or the rear side cover plate. This can be a little tricky because you've got to use these very small steel screws and very small um, nuts that go with those screws. And um, you know, getting these screws to hold in place, there's really nothing to hold them in place before you insert the screw. So you've got to kind of put your finger behind the cover uh, and hold the the nut in place while you get the screw started on the nut that's the best way I can describe it um, if you've ever put together uh, a 3d printer an a net uh, 3d printer you you'll know what I'm talking about but at least with those printers they had a way of putting the nuts in um, with a with a backing almost that would hold the nut if you just slide the nut in the, in this hole it will fall right through so it's, it's not difficult, it's just a little tricky, and as you get closer to putting the case together and closing it up, you'll see, you'll, I'll show you, it gets harder. Uh, you, you've almost got to use needle nose to hold those, those nuts in place while you tighten the screw. And you repeat that same process for the two side panels as well. Hold the nut, insert the screw, get it started, tighten it down. So the next step is to actually attach the joystick mechanism to the top plate and there's four, um, they're almost look, they look like carriage bolts. Uh, they're thick bolts with a, um, a, a square hex um, at the top under the head and you can see on the top plate how it's square to keep the bolts from spinning when you insert them into the, uh, into the holes. So four of those with locking washers will attach the joystick mechanism to the top plate. And uh, you'll need a 5 16th either open-ended wrench, box wrench, or socket to tighten those down.
So the next order of business is to screw on the ball on top of the joystick and the buttons just pop right into place inside of each hole. Next order of business is to attach the joystick control cables and the button cables to the interface board that interfaces the joystick to the um, joystick cable, if you will. So each one of these wires, each one of these sets of wires controls um, up and down, left and right, button one, button two firing mechanisms. Now it's just a matter of attaching the wires to the joystick mechanism and to each button. Now, believe it or not, the most challenging part of this project was putting the top cover on because, like I said earlier in the video, now I can't get my hands in there um, behind the, each panel to hold the nut um, before I screw the screw in. So, uh, you'll see I get to the point where I try and hold the nut with the uh, needle nose pliers, but the needle, needle nose pliers are actually too thick to actually go all the way inside the hole and hold the nut you know, perfectly aligned. I try and put the nuts on the bolts first and slide the, the top cover on that way, but that doesn't work. I end up taking the nuts off and doing them one by one the hard way of just trying to align the nut in the hole and then match the screw up with the nut and get it started. So the rule is just take your time, don't lose your patience, and eventually you'll get them on. I did have a bit of a problem towards the end getting the last corner of the top panel um, to line up with the side plates. I think it had to do with a small imperfection in the cutting process because I ultimately had to pull out the rat tail file, which was too thick for the slot, um, but ultimately used my X-Acto knife to cut out a little bit of the plastic um, to make it line up and drop into place. It just, it just wasn't going with the stock, the stock cut.
Let's go ahead and give Pac-Man a shot and see how this guy works. See, I missed that up right there. It's definitely got a much longer throw than your typical joystick. In other words, you gotta move the joystick a lot more than what you're used to on those smaller joysticks in order to get get it to move in the direction that you want it to. But it is very smooth, I will say that. It doesn't take very much effort or strength to actually get it in the direction you want it to go. There was a down that I missed. Every once in a while, I'll, I'll, I'll miss a direction that I want to go in. And I think it's just going to get some, take some getting used to. Probably easier if you let it spring back. In other words, for this type of game, you go in the direction that you want, then you let go of the joystick so that it centers itself. So that your next position, you don't have to worry about coming back from where you were, if that makes sense. I find that a little bit easier. So in other words, for playing Pac-Man like this, if I'm gonna go left, I'll hit it left and let go, let it center, and then down, and instead of holding it right, for example, and then going up, and then going left, and then going right, and then going left, and then going right, just kind of hit the direction you wanna go, let go of it so that you're back at center. I think, at least for me personally, I find it a little easier to control that way. And maybe that's how we did it in the arcade. I don't remember exactly, to be honest with you. But it, it, it is a nice joystick. I mean, it's, it's, once you hit it in the direction that you, that you want to go, it doesn't miss. Like some of the cheaper Atari joysticks or even that Starfighter joystick that I showed you earlier in the video, sometimes you'll actually push that joystick in a certain direction and it just won't read because either the contacts are worn out or they're old or they're just a bad quality. These micro switches that are in this joystick are, I would, I would imagine are probably top of the line. They're meant to take a beating and to keep going. So anyway, that's Pac-Man. Let's go ahead and take a look at another game. Let's take a look at Donkey Kong, for example. Because Donkey Kong, we, we actually have to get into the buttons. Let's see how well this works. So, you know, Donkey Kong is one of those games where you have to hold the joystick in the direction you want to go. If you let go, he stops. So this is one of the games where I think it's going to take a little bit more getting used to this type of uh, this type of throw in this joystick. But like I said, it's very it's very positive in its response. In other words, when you finally activate that micro switch, it doesn't it doesn't miss. I mean, it just goes which is nice. And the amount of effort it takes to actually control the joystick is, I mean, I'm just using two fingers, for example, right now. Two fingers or a thumb, and I mean, it, it just goes without a problem. What's nice too is this free this free floats and spins this knob. So even though I have the knob tightened, the the actual shaft itself is freely rotatable. So as you're playing the game, if your hand moves left or right a little bit, it's not going to affect your gameplay. That's kind of cool. That's one thing about the old style joysticks; they would kind of get your fingers tired because um, they don't actually they don't move. In other words, this spins freely. So if your hand turns a little bit left or right or up and down, the joystick is is right there for you. It just follows along. And to be honest, I'm actually doing better at this game right here probably than I would have with the old school Atari joystick. Oops, <laughs> that's what I get for opening my mouth. <laughs> I should know better. So 
see if I can make it past this level. Oof, close one. This is always the tricky part. Oh! <laughs> no dice. One more shot. That spring seems to, uh, I don't know what kind of logic they built into this game. Uh, but it's definitely not just some constant pattern that it runs. It's, it changes based on your position and your movement. Oh, I can't believe that fireball got me. All right, let's try one more game. Let's try an old school arcade game, Galaxian, for example. That's, that would be something that this type of joystick would really be built for. So let's see if we can go down here and find Galaxian. One of my favorite games on the 8-bit, at least. Probably one of the best well-written games. Oh, definitely. I see in a game like this, this joystick definitely shines. Because it is just so positive in its, in its response. I mean, there's just no missing going back and forth, left and right with this joystick. As a matter of fact, it's quite enjoyable to play this game. I, I can see myself playing this game for, you know, a while without my hand getting tired with this type of joystick. You know, the other style of joystick, you got to put a lot of tension and pressure on it. This one is, the fact that it's sitting on its feet is a bonus. That takes the weight of holding the joystick. And second of all, you know, just being able to move this joystick freely with two fingers is a real joy. So that's, that's my two cents on that. Not bad. Again, no fatigue at all on the hand. These big arcade buttons, these uh, clicky buttons, haven't missed once. Anyway, there it is, guys. The Monster Joysticks. Pick yourselves one up today. All right, well, there you have it. The Monster Mini Retro Joystick. Um, overall, I think it's a great product. I like it. Um, I will tell you that I'm not a big fan of the amount of throw or distance that you have to move this joystick in order for it to actually um, you know, activate, if you will, in the different X and Y axes. Um, but it does take some getting used to. I, I figured out pretty quickly that the more I play with it, the better I get with it and the more I like it. So you just have to be aware that this guy is, uh, it's, it's more of an arcade quality and more of an arcade size joystick versus if we look at something like the, where is it? One of these old style, Atari style joysticks. This one happens to be the Starfighter. This guy here has a much shorter throw. In other words, it's tighter as far as its movement, but it doesn't actually activate as well as the monster joystick. So the only thing that I would say about this that I don't like, at least at this point, maybe I'll get used to it, is the distance it takes to actually activate you know, the joystick in the different directions. It's, it's, not a, uh, it's not a showstopper, but it's just one of those things that I have to get used to, I guess. Uh, but overall, it's a good product. I probably will order another one. I'll probably go for the clear one next time. Um, so if you're thinking about trying this, uh, I'll give it a thumbs up. I mean, it's compared to some of the other joysticks out there, this is definitely a winner. So anyway, take care, guys. I'll see you in the next video. We're going to come back with some programming here shortly as soon as I get time to edit and uh, um, get those posted for you. So... Thanks again for watching. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would highly, um, what's the word I was going to say? I would highly appreciate the subscription and uh, tell your friends and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.